The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are thinking not as God does, but as humans do. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become my follower, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit anyone to gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will anyone give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each according to their work. The Gospel of the Lord. The common theme for today's reading is the temptation to flee from suffering. Making sense out of suffering, unpacking the meaning of suffering, and especially the suffering of our loved ones, is one of life's most difficult struggles. Sometimes there is no making sense of it. It remains one of life's bottomless experiences. It has a built-in opacity, and there can be no explaining it away. And yet suffering is inescapable. To be born is to suffer. And so perhaps it has something to teach us and we look to our readings for a clue. I love the opening line from the prophet Jeremiah. It provides the context for all of our struggles. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. The Jerusalem Bible says, you have seduced me, and I was seduced. You have overpowered me and you have prevailed. There's a certain way that God's self-communication and grace is irresistible. Such is God's beauty and attraction, the delight of the invitation into intimacy with the Lord. But the call to speak the prophetic word as a consequent cost. Jeremiah has become a laughingstock and everyone mocks him because he is not afraid to speak the word of God. In an attempt to escape this suffering, he decides to keep his mouth shut. I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, he says. This word that burns like a fire in his heart, like a fire in his belly, smoldering in his bones. But there is so much infidelity and injustice in the land. The suffering of others cries out and he cannot keep his mouth shut. 
I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, he says. And so he says yes to the suffering that comes with speaking the Word of God. In the Gospel, we have something similar. Jesus lays out the cost of his mission, his suffering, death, the cross. Peter wants to leap right over these to the victory, the resurrection. He is not yet able to see the connection between the cross and the empty tomb. Peter is only able to see suffering as a stumbling block, something to trip over on the way to victory. Peter's refusal of the cross is, however, the stumbling block for Jesus and for us. And the cure? If anyone wants to become my follower, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You've got to lose yourself in order to find yourself. Try to save yourself and you will lose yourself. Here again is Jesus' upside-down kingdom, his reversal of the values of this world. We live in a culture that seeks to avoid suffering at all costs, from avoidance entertainment, distractions to painkillers, from doctor-assisted suicide, to an overly anxious fear of COVID. It is not that we should seek out suffering. It is, it is a good thing to feel and to seek to heal the pain of the world. But if suffering comes our way, let us embrace the cross. God will provide a way for us to grow with what life sends us. And if we unite our suffering with the cross of Christ, our suffering can also be redemptive. Let it be so.